Hey, happy Friday, everyone. Hope you're doing well this Friday. Today's topics, we'll be talking about local SEO and growing an agency with Juan Marino. Don't forget to visit today's sponsor, hrefs.com slash awt. So how's everyone doing today? It's pretty chilly where I'm at. Hot, cold, raining. Be sure to say hi in the live chat and where you're watching from. Give your shots out. Carol, hello from Seattle, Washington. I'll be giving away some copies of the SEO in 2023 book if you guys haven't seen this yet. The book release was this past Tuesday. We had a four hour book launch on YouTube. Be sure to check it out. Some great info and tips from all the 101 SEOs that were in this book. SEO in 2023 book. Be sure to put I love SEO in the live chats. Shoot me an email. If you're in the US, I will send you a copy of this book. Email me at dre at seo.video. My man, what's up, Dre? So ready for Ruan to come in the back. We got less than five minutes to go. We talk about local SEO and growing an agency. Ruan grew his agency from $10,000 a month to $100,000 a month in revenue. We'd love to learn how he did that. Learning, we'll be learning about local SEO and growing his agency. Uh, don't forget to visit today's sponsor, hrefs.com slash awt. Don't be shy, guys. I see a few of you out there. Say so what's up in the live chat. So I can hear you, I can see you just fine. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you pretty well. All right, so I'm going, I'm doing the countdown right now. I've got about less than three minutes to go. And I will introduce you in about maybe eight minutes after 12, my time. I kind of go over a few okay. videos in the beginning and then I'll have your introduction. So you can okay. chat, with, chat with people on the live chats and I will catch you in. Okay, awesome. All right. All right, guys, we're on to the background. Today we'll be talking about local SEO and growing an agency. With Ruan Marino of Developmark. Today's sponsor is hrefs.com slash awt. Don't forget to visit them. And Ruan, were you able to get see my topics and kind of questions? I updated the, the invite. Were you able to check those out? I didn't actually be able to see that. The invite came out in like, it's almost like code, you know? So I don't see them like clearly, but I kind of okay. can read them through here. So okay. I'm, I'm prepared for anything though. So all right, all uh, right. I've right. <laughs> got Ooh. answers. Love it! All right, guys. Today we'll be talking about local SEO and growing an agency with a very guest special guest today, Ruan Marino. Awesome. Don't 
Don't be shy, guys. Say hi in the live chat. I see a few of you out there. From Fletcher, what's up, my man? <laughs> Happy Friday, fellas. From Maddox, what's up? <laughs> Victor McGrath, what's up, Ruan? Right, guys, we got less than one minute to go. I'm going to go ahead and get things ready here. Don't forget to get your shouts out. Today we'll be talking about local SEO and growing agency with a very special guest, Ruan Marino. Don't forget to visit today's sponsor, hrefs.com slash AWT. Stefan, my man, happy Friday. of SEO, you will be amazed. Time to get your brand off pace to on page. Dropping knowledge, legendary for sure. Whether you're just getting started, a self-employed entrepreneur. Yeah, let's go. Subscribe to the SEO video show. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to another episode of the SEO video show where SEO is alive and fun. My name is Paul Andre Devera, aka Dre, and I curate SEO videos released in the past week into about one minute clips. My favorite part of the show is when I get to introduce my guest, and my guest today is the SEO strategist of Mark, Ruan Marino. Before we get started, let's say what's up to everyone in chat. I see Stefan, Fletcher, Maddox, Ernesto, Victor, Carol, Luther. Welcome, welcome. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Now let's get on with the show. This is Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. <laughs> Where is the best place to hide a dead body? Page two of Google. First with Google, Google updated the Helpful Content System page to state that the classifier works globally across all languages. The Helpful Content System aims to reward better content where visitors feel they have a satisfi satisfying experience, while content that doesn't meet a visitor's experience won't perform as well. Okay, Google also added two new myths to the crawl budget documentation. No index is an, isn't an excellent way to control your crawl budget and pages that serve 404 status codes don't waste the crawl budget. The link to these updates are in the description below. All right, Ross Hutchins says, leverage Brave for title tags. Let's check this one out. So titles are a huge part of SEO, so we suggest using the title tag formula Brave when thinking through how to write compelling titles. So what Brave means is brand, recentness, amount, velocity, and economy. So the quick version of each of those is make your post title compelling. From a freshness standpoint, recentness would mean you've published it recently. Is it this year or even as much as this month? Is your post timestamp also recent? That also makes it different. Amount is relevant. If you're trying to be competitive with the number of results, that will show that you're compelling and worth clicking on as compared to something with 40 more. You do need to be cognizant when too many results is not actually helpful, such as a list of SEO tools. You might not want 5,000 tools. You might rather want the 10 important tools you need to perform your high quality search. Velocity is another one. It's effectively how quickly you can get someone value. That could be just simply speed, like how to graduate as an RN in 12 months. 
the economy is effectively, are you a, a low price option if that's applicable to you? So if you were searching cheap t-shirts and you found $1 t-shirts and you sold $1 t-shirts, you could include that. I talk about writing compelling meta titles almost every week. It's the best way to increase your CTR. Remember, you can also use, always test your meta titles by using paid search. Speaking of meta titles, I hosted the SEO in 2023 book launch this past week, and I asked all the SEOs what their meta title was, would be, and their uh, number one SEO tip in 2023. Let's check out Lily Ray's answer. Awesome. Um, well, originally in the book, I said, expand your content strategy into other formats, which is not that clickbaity, but uh, kind of straight to the point. Um, I talked about the importance of thinking beyond text content, which we've been talking about for a long time in SEO, but it's clear with new SERP features, you know, with YouTube, with Discover, with web stories, with TikTok, with everything that's happening in the search results that's, uh, you know, visual and interactive and a lot of videos and short videos. It's increasingly important to you think about um, just formatting your your content and your ideas in different ways. So audio and visual particularly. And also just like in general, I didn't say this in the book, but I always talk about this. Um, the E and E is probably for me the single most important factor in SEO right now, because especially with the rise of AI content, the importance of having actual subject matter expertise and firsthand experience is becoming increasingly important. If you read Google's product review guidelines, I personally think this is should be the rubric for all SEO strategies, not just product reviews, because they're asking us to show the user and the searcher evidence that we actually know what we're talking about, whether that's text evidence, video evidence, uh, image evidence, and then just reading through the text and having something new and unique to say is increasingly important. If you have some time, watch or listen to all four hours of the book launch. There are a ton of knowledge bombs that we talk about from this book. If you want to win a copy of the book, please type in I Love SEO in the live chat and email me your address at dreyatseo.video. Okay, things not to do with 301 redirects by Omni Cito on SE Ranking. Let's check this one out. You're allowed to have as many uh, your 301 redirects as you want, but too many redirects too many redirects from my personal experience lead to long redirects chains, right? And they start creeping into your sitemaps. You know, you know we're not allowed to do that, right? You know we're not, it's not good to have tier one redirects in your sitemaps, but they will start creeping there, you know? And yes, sooner or later, sooner or later, if you have too many uh, tier one redirects, you end up with a lot of redirect loops. Sooner or later, you, you will end up with, as the website grows, the orphan pages grows and everything else grows, your, your redirects loop will, loops will also grow. And we know, and we know that this is not good for the Google bot, and we know that this is not good for the user experience. In Omni's slide, he mentions, do not redirect 404s to the home uh, to a home page do not redirect to a redirect and do not use pages with your 31 status in your sitemap okay next video is by chris palmer and he shares how to increase website traffic and rankings using google search console let's check this one out you figure out what does google think my page is about well google thinks that this page is about mini cooper service lights and i know this because google is showing me for this search term so by taking this search term all right, this phrase and adding it to your page one or two more times, maybe even adding another heading on the page that contains this, this will drastically increase your chances of ranking very, very high for this term with little to no effort. Literally coming in here and finding the words that are getting a lot of clicks or getting a lot of impressions, right? But, um, but are ranking bad by adding them to the page a few more times, it's like you instantly rank for them. So this is one of the easiest, fastest ways to get a ranking increase without spending a lot of money and spending a lot of time. All right, do you know who knows all about local SEO? My guest today. Please ask questions in, in, on the topic and I'll address them in the order that they were received. But before we get started, here's a word from our sponsor. Are you sick of your competitors outranking you in the search results? Your solution is Ahrefs Webmaster Tools and it's free 99. This isn't one of your 14 day free trial offers. Instead, it's a super powerful tool that'll do a full website audit for you and keep working for you for free. 
It'll scan your site and prioritize precisely what you need to fix and improve for your search results. Visit hrefs.com webmaster dash tools for this free tool. Find the link below and by checking our sponsors, you support this show. Now let's introduce our guest. Ruin started his digital marketing career in 2015. He has a passion for teaching others how to search marketing works. He started posting videos on YouTube in 2017 and has over 100,000 subscribers. He leaves the vision for his agency and took it from 10,000 to over 100,000 a month in revenue. Please welcome the SEO strategist of Developmark, Juan Marino. everyone my man welcome to the show yeah thank you so much for having me i appreciate it i'm, I'm gonna be honest i had no idea how highly produced this was so uh it's <laughs> kind of relieving to see somebody doing it this way love it love it everyone give a round of applause to Ruan. All right, Ruan, this is, I'm just get right into it this is the number one question i ask all master professionals that come on board in one minute or less how does Ruan get ranking on page one of Google? So we do it for clients. Um, so how do our clients get rankings on the first page of Google? Um, it really comes down to branding and marketing outside of Google to get yeah. people's interest in searching them in Google, which ultimately tells Google they're popular and should rank for the search results that describes their business. Um, so I think doing a lot of things like reputation management, um, doing a lot of things like link building, doing a lot of things like brand search, a lot of those types of things help our clients rank at the top of the search results. Love it. First knowledge bomb of today. Hold on. Okay. Let's rewind this real quick. Go on. Take us way back. Way back to when, about, what was it, 2015, 2017? How did you first get into SEO? Uh, I think how I got into SEO was with my dad. He started a painting business. He had a painting business and he was paying a lot of money for newspaper. And um, I figured, you know what, like there must be a way to get better business through the internet. So I searched how to make a website, made his website, got him ranking on Google, and he started getting work and he started giving money for what I was doing. And then so I took that idea and said, what if I can do that to a bunch of local businesses? Mm -hmm. And then I was introduced to the entire idea of owning a digital marketing agency, which I fell in love with and I still do to this day. Love it. So you said you, you love it by starting this whole digital marketing business. So what part of like uh, SEO actually got you interested in, in it? Was it like, you know, that uh, meeting these people, helping businesses? Let us know. I think I've always been a good salesperson. Um, I've always want, wanted a dream. Like I've always wanted a product that I can sell to a business and SEO is perfect. One, because I'm extremely technical. I'm really good at computers. I'm really good at uh, tech. I'm really good at video. I'm really good at media. And so I was looking for something online based. My first idea was to sell ads on Twitter. And then um, Twitter wasn't really as popular as Google at the time. This was in 2017, 18. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's why I, I, I like the agency part of it. I really like the idea of helping a customer achieve their goals through digital marketing. Love it. Love it. Okay. So then how'd you actually learn SEO then? So I did it a few ways. Um, one was a group called OMG Machines, and okay. they were very popular during the time. I'm sure you know of them. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of teaching this gray hat approach where you tricked Google, but not too much. And so that was really interesting to me because like gamifying basically anything I'm really into. Yep. Um, so gamifying Google, gamifying search engines, reverse engineering, really getting into the technicals of why Google picks different results. I fell in love with that. Um, and the way I got into the agency part was actually through Ty Lopez. He had a social media marketing agency oh. course. I was one of the kids that was in that wave. I was one of the kids that did really well after that course with his with his actual program. And so um, from there, I kind of just kept doing what I was instructed to do, what OMG was telling me to do, what Ty Lopez was telling me to do. And eventually I started seeing success. 
Love that. Love that. I do remember what Ty um, promoting that long time ago and, and just like going out. I didn't know. I realized uh, that. I mean, I didn't know it worked, but I mean, hey, dude, you're out here 10,000 to 100,000 in revenue, which is what I want to talk about. So tell us like how, what you kind of got us into like the OMG and what Ty, you follow Ty, like, what Lopez did. And so tell us like, you know, how did you come up with Develop Mark with the name and where it's at today and you know, how's it doing? So Developmark was thought of, it was the second domain name I actually thought of. The first domain name I thought of was Naugatuck SEO, which was my hometown. Okay. And that was just like, you know, that just goes to show you how small entrepreneurs generally think when they're starting out. Mm -hmm. I thought that I was going to be stuck in my town and I wanted to show up for SEO. And this is a place with like zero search volume. So then I thought of like, well, let me actually think of like a company name because I didn't want to use an exact match domain. It just sounded cheesy at the time. So I thought of what is it that I'm doing? And so I thought of develop your marketing. That's what I was doing for customers. I was helping them develop their marketing plans. And that's where I came up for Developmark. So I took that name, I squished it together, and that's how I came up with the name for Developmark. Now, Developmark's evolution has really been um, pretty dramatic. When we started, Ty was teaching, do Facebook ads, do Facebook ads, do Facebook ads. And after one or two years of doing Facebook ads, I've got the same type of complaints over and over and over again, right? Like. Um, their leads are coming in, but they're not converting. We, these leads are, are tire kickers. They don't want to pay this and this. Mm -hmm. And the moment I started doing SEO, my customers were trying to tell me, hey, we actually got a customer that paid from Google. And that was really relieving to hear because the number one stressor that I have inside of my agency is when a client is dissatisfied. Yeah. So I stopped doing Facebook ads so much and I really focused in on search engine marketing um, because it actually produced customers who were paying for their services and getting them an ROI. Um, and so the production or the, the progress of Developmark has been from doing just advertising, which I still see agencies doing, mm -hmm. to then offering SEO and a lot of the agencies doing that. And now to this pretty evolved point to where we have to make their website and we have to manage their ads, CRM and SEO at this point. Love that. So you say search marketing and, and you're talking about like um, ads. Were you actually also doing PPC with your um, SEO? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're still doing PPC with our SEO. Um, pretty um, if applicable, mm -hmm. um, it just makes sense, especially if you're in an agency realm where you're managing hundreds of clients. Mm -hmm. You don't want to wait for traffic to get to your website, especially if you're working with local like we. Are. So PPC is a really good service to offer as an agency because they start seeing traction literally right when their website goes live. Yep. And since we rebuild their website, all of their pages are landing pages on the website all automatically. So we actually don't need to use separate landing pages. And this ultimately allows us to report higher analytics, higher metrics to their website because it's a it's a combination of all of their different sources. And that's really good. If you guys know if you do client work and you're reporting to a client, it's really critical that the stats look like they're going up and up and up and up and up, or they're they're gonna think it's not. You're in a perception game. So for me, it's all about when can I get them the next phone call and lead and how can I make the stats look better? Love that. Okay, so when you talk about managing clients and stuff like that, I'm, and I'm curious, like a lot of uh, my audience will probably want to like know this too. Like, is there any like software that you use to manage clients and help uh, build your websites and stuff like that? There is. So um, I know this, this show is sponsored by Ahrefs, and I love the guys over at Ahrefs. But I think that SCM Rush does such a good job with that, especially mm -hmm. with managing clients, um, specifically their automatic reporting feature. Um, I think that that's something that's really important because as you start to scale, we don't have the time to write manual monthly reports for every yeah. single customer. So SEM rush, I don't know if Ahrefs does this. I have no idea. I haven't used Ahrefs in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if they allow you to put analytics into a PDF and automatically send it. That was really important for us in making a determination of the software that we're going to use for SEO. Mm -hmm. I know people that use all three. They'll use Moz, Ahrefs, and SEMrush. And I always like to break it down this way. Ahrefs has the best SEO data available. That's true, always. SEMrush has the best client collaboration yeah. tools available. And then I think Moz has the best local tools available. So with my SEO software, I'm not really looking for local. I'll use a platform like Yext to actually accomplish mm -hmm. that. And of mm -hmm. course, people are very, very hesitant on using something like Yext because if you cancel service with Yext, it undoes yeah. all of the listings. But that's actually one of the um, while you're with Developmark, it's kind of like buying a phone and having a phone plan. Mm -hmm. Everything is set up the right way and everything is ranking and everything is doing well. Whereas we treat the phone as the hardware mm -hmm. is our website. So the website will be the phone and then the service, aka the LTE or the 5G, that'll be the SEO and the PPC. 
Um, so in terms of SEO tools that we use, a lot of them are things like Ahrefs and SEMrush, but then our website platform management service that we use is actually called Duda, D-U-D-A. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have found that with Duda, you can make incredible looking websites really, really fast, super profitable. Mm -hmm. And it's the best by far for team collaboration. It knocks WordPress out the park by a million miles. Love it. Thank you for sharing all your tools there. Hopefully that helps some of you guys out there. We're getting some questions coming in, but I wanted to go into, um, uh, let's go ahead and take one question from the audience right here before I go into my next question here. We got one from Stefan. Stefan asks, hi, Ruan, what link building methods do you use? So there's a few of them. Um, one of my favorite link building methods I use is um, obviously citations and directory links. Like right when we get a client, just by adding them onto X, it gives them 62 or so citations that are accurate. And these are all of the networks that have a high authority that Google really likes. So that's why I really like using X. And if a client cancels, we turn off Yaks, so we save on the cost that they cancel, so we're not paying for that service. And it's also a con for them to leave. So now they've got to figure out what they want to do on their end. And since we buy Yaks at such a bulk cost, it costs us less than if they were to go retail. So generally, that would allow them to not cancel and, and retain. Um, the second way is through content marketing. Now, of course, with GTP3 coming out, there's going to be a lot of areas of opportunities in how people do content marketing. And I'm very curious to see how that's going to go. Mm -hmm. But I really like to identify what about the business is link worthy and creating articles about that and then trying to get people to link to them by either doing uh, just uh, ranking at the top of the search results for long queries, questions and things along those lines. Mm -hmm. And then off, also, this is a trick that Ahrefs taught on their actual YouTube channel, which I loved watching which was actually bidding on a lot of your blogs in PPC because a lot of the people that are searching some of these query based uh, questions, they're actually writing articles and trying to gather information on the web. And by running PPC, you can bid really low for a lot of these blog keywords and it's going to drive a bunch of traffic to your website. You're not gonna pay a ton in Google ads costs because they're not money keywords. They're not your primary target keywords. So the bid is gonna be really low and you'll get thousands of clicks, especially if it's a high search term keyword phrase. So a lot of the big softwares do this, Ahrefs, SEMrush, Jasper, a lot of them actually do this. They bid on some of the blogs that they're running with a really low CPC amount, and that allows them to get all of the clicks and then people start linking out to them. So I recommend targeting an article with a bunch of search traffic, targeting it with PPC so there's a very low click through, uh, 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 cost per click, and then seeing if you get natural links over time as you do that with more blogs. Damn! Nice, nice, man. Drop some knowledge bombs over there. Let me give you one right there. All right, all right, all right. All right, so I want to go back into um, uh, to our topics here that we I had planned out. And you you actually um, to launched your YouTube channel in 2017 and got you know millions of views and over 100,000 subscribers. And you actually talk about, I'm curious, like, um, uh, what are some like tactics that you're doing to build up your YouTube presence? Yeah, so it's really funny that you ask that. Um, we just hired a full-time video editor because I completely dropped the ball on YouTube career. Uh -huh. um, but that's going to change. We're going to be doing some really cool content coming out very soon. Um, but really, at, at the time, I was really lucky uh, to come into YouTube. Now it's extremely saturated. At the time, it was this weird period of time where SEOs had you had to pay to learn anything about SEO. Mm -hmm. And nobody was showing their clients. Like I just saw you showing Chris Palmer. Mm -hmm. And he blurred out all his client stuff. It's like, that's for me, um, that's not enjoyable to nothing against Chris Palmer, of course, because I mm -hmm. love him. He's a great guy. We're, we're good friends. But there's people want to see like the customer. And so on my channel, what was different than most SEO channels was I actually showed people the customer. And there came consequences mm -hmm. with that. One of them was like people tried to spam the client, take down their GMB, whatever. That's kind of oh. why SEOs don't do it. I took the risk mm -hmm. and people were able to see like a real client, real results, real backend work. And that transparency, right around that 2018, 2019 timeframe, um, I think it just resonated with people really well. Whereas if they wanted to learn what they were going to learn on my channel, they would have to pay $6,000 to go learn it from some SEO guru. And I was just doing it for free on my channel. So I think that type of approach really held, really, you know, accelerated our views. Um, but also I, I reached a wider audience because I was a lot younger than a lot of the other SEOs who were teaching the information. But of course, that's changed. I know a lot of new SEO YouTubers that are much younger than I am because it's been five years since I've made a video mm -hmm. um, or sent me my first video. And so um, I'm kind of getting to that age where I'm getting a little bit older and I'm kind of seeing like these new players come in and I'm ready to get back into it. So that's how I got started. I think it was a combination of luck, but then I also think it was a combination of not charging money for what I know. 
love it sharing that information for everyone to check out okay so what in your youtube channel you do talk about um your top local seo tips in 2020 and in 2021 but i didn't see a 2022 one so what would your top 20 uh 22 2023 local seo tips be well i mean i think without without i mean one of the obvious ones is leverage ai as much as possible okay. especially uh gtp3 uh, or if you're not technical, you can use Jasper, which has just like a layer of UI and usability built on top of GTP3, right? Mm -hmm. When you think of a service like Ethereum, which is a blockchain, that's the tech. And then people build on top of things like Ethereum to give you a better experience. So a lot of applications are going to start doing that with GTP3 now that it's open. So keep your eye out on a lot of SEO AI tools that are really going to help you do things in the masses, such as writing new content, writing headlines, writing meta descriptions, automatically writing chat scripts, all of these types of things. Keep your eye on AI. I think it's really critical. So that's my number one tip. And then my second tip, if you're an agency, I kind of want to give one on the business side mm -hmm. is really pay attention to the clients that you're accepting into your organization. Because if a client had, doesn't have any branded search volume, they're not going to rank. It doesn't for the primary keywords. They're just not, it doesn't make sense. Google's going to look at one client that has, let's say, 500 people that are searching their exact name on Google. And mm -hmm. then they're going to look at your client who has zero people searching their exact name on Google. They're going to pick the one that's getting searched directly because that's going to be the one they determine to be the best business for that visitor. Google doesn't want to tie a business owner to a customer if they don't believe that business is a good business. And the indication that they use for that are several things like backlinks, branded search, and site structure and content. But site structure and content with AI becoming so prominent, not really going to matter anymore because it's all going to be the same from robots that write it. So what is Google going to use to really determine what is a popular business? And that's going to be branded search volume. You already see this happening with Google guaranteed Google local service ads mm -hmm. and Google local service ads basically has the business owner do a background check, verify their license, do all of this type of stuff. So I can see in the foreseeable future that a business is going to have some of these qualifications that are going to allow them to rank higher organically if they already don't, because we're already starting to see it on the Google Guaranteed route. Love it, love it. I haven't talked about Google Guaranteed as much here. And um, so is that something that you have to apply for? I mean, what's the process of getting Google Guaranteed as your service? So if you're not doing Google Guaranteed, um, you're missing out on a ton of money because it basically guarantees that you is, you're going to get a good lead and it guarantees the customer that they're going to get a good service. So okay. no search engine is doing that. I mean, Google's just on top of it, right? So not only is Google saying, we know you're going to have a good time with this business, we are so confident if they do a bad job, we will refund you for what oh. you paid. So think about that, right? Like if you were to go remodel your kitchen, and pay 12 grand and you found them through Google Guarantee and the contractor didn't show up, did a bad job, took your money and stole from you. Google's going to pay you to do that. So of course, Google's very careful with who they're picking. So Google Guarantee is a program to which you can show up above the actual PPC listings with a green check mark that you've been verified and screened by Google. And all you have to do is submit your license, a background check and submit basic company information. Anybody can get listed almost at this point with the exception of healthcare. Once they release healthcare, because Develomark is primarily a lot of healthcare clients, mm -hmm. it's going to be a very exciting time in digital marketing because they're basically going to guarantee visitors that they're going to have a good experience with the business. Nice. Love it. Love it. So I actually want to also talk about, because you've actually, I've seen um, a video of you actually talking about like um, crowdsourcing for content, like creating content. You like, you would go to like different social channels and, and crowd, like ask questions and stuff like that. Can you kind of explain that strategy for everyone on here and like how they can uh, build some content through like asking questions in different groups? I think the best thing to do there is to find a keyword that is really, really, um, it, 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 it candidate for that is crowdsourcing. So I'll give you an example. Uh, if I was making a, 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 an article about why, um, I don't know, Call of Duty is the best game of all time, I don't necessarily know that I would spend time picking the reasons why. I might just pop into a Reddit group and ask, why is Call of Duty the best game of all time? And all of a sudden, you're going to have 100 passionate Reddit people commenting as to why it's the best of all time. And now you can create data based on that uh, that generated content and it's yours, it's your original post. So you can use it and reference to it and use that data. One of the ways that we did this recently with a moving company was we were trying to capture visitors before they actually were moving. And the best way to do that was to see if they were researching a town as to why they should move there. So for example, we wanted to show up for things like reasons to move to Connecticut. 
there may not be a lot of reasons, but there are some reasons, right? And so what we did was we would go to Facebook groups for every town in Connecticut and ask, why, why do you like living in X town? And then we would create a blog taking the information from all the comments through every single Facebook group. And now we rank for almost every town in the state of Connecticut for a client and reasons why they should move to X town. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to capture that visitor before they actually are moving, cookie mm -hmm. them to our site and then retarget them later. So we're using SEO to capture data for the website and then doing retargeting through digital advertising. So all in all, um, that's just one example of it. But all in all, if you can get a user generated content strategy going, usually they're question based. Uh, it's a really good way for you to save a ton of time. And guess what? AI can probably write most of it for you. Love it, love it. Thank you for that. Okay, so I wanted to go into so you're in the in the you know local local SEO built work with a lot of companies. I mean, many people are talking about like um, whether a recession is coming or is already here. I mean, what are some top three recession proof industries um, for offering SEO services that you've seen? I always I always like to say um, healthcare is pretty good. Okay. Um, it is because people who care about their health people need to go to the doctor, right? Mm -hmm. But there's also this thing called elective healthcare, which is basically people like to stay healthy. And um, that's really recession proof because you really mm -hmm. don't need to repaint your whole house. And you really like home services freaks me out a little bit at times. We have a lot of home services and the clients are wonderful. But sometimes the issue is like homeowners just take forever to make buying decisions and they may hold off on a decision for two or three years. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some home services like roofing or plumbing or HVAC that people just can't live without. So I would really go for the trades or the businesses that require a really long period of time of school. Right. And so to become a dentist, you need to go to school for eight years. And because of that, the amount of dentists in Google search engines are just less. So it's easier to do SEO for them. But if you're taking on, let's say, power washing companies, well, it, anybody can get a home improvement contractor's license and buy a power washer at Home Depot. I'm not, I'm not saying that that career is easy. I'm not, you know, commenting on that industry. Yeah. I'm just saying the competition is going to be a lot broader because there's a lot more people in the playing field. To become a lawyer is much more difficult than to open up an HIC license. So mm -hmm. if you work with lawyers, you're going to get better results. You're going to get paid more and it's going to be more recession proof because there are less of them than your general contractor per se. So I think when you when you think about recession proof, think about the industries where there's a, not a lot of them. And I'll give you a great one. Child care centers. Okay. We have child care centers. They don't want more customers. They can't handle it. And so it's an expensive service. People need them. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of them. It's the perfect niche for an SEO agency to kind of focus on. But we are seeing comments about the recession. Uh, we are seeing comments about they don't have enough staff taking leads. They want to pause their marketing. That yeah. stuff is actually really yeah. happening right now. So consider your pricing, too, as we get into these tougher times. I've seen people that are increasing their prices and taking on less customers, which is a wonderful luxury to have. And I've seen people like myself who are trying to be competitive with our pricing and make it unique enough to give the business enough value to work with us, but also acquire new customers during this downturn. Love it. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, and yeah, I mean, you also talk about, um, I want to go into more of the business side of things of, of your agency. And if you've actually talked about on other, on other channels and other shows on, on your SEO proposals and how they can close a lot of great deals. I mean, um, and I heard that your SEO proposals are remarkable. I mean, can you share like how your SEO proposals are structured? Like, cause you, I mean, you talked about like the pricing and stuff like that too. Like how is yours uh, structured? So because we're, um, we take a lot of our inspiration from the cell phone companies, believe it or not. So, um, and people ask me why, 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 like, why not? Why take it from a cell phone company? And to me, it just makes so much sense, right? Because I've actually worked at a cell phone company for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they, they discount your hardware. So like for this example, this is an iPhone something. I don't even, I don't even know where it's at anymore, but this is an iPhone and it, this is the hardware. So Apple sells this hardware. I sell Duda, right? And that's kind of my Apple. And then I am the Verizon or the AT&T and I service that Apple phone on a monthly basis. So our contract is made up of two different types of things. One is the hardware, the website. We don't call it hardware, but just to get a comparison. And that website generally has a one-time fee associated with it. If you don't want to pay that one-time fee, then you can sign a contract and then you won't own your website. If you were to leave six months within the contract, you'd have to pay to fulfill the contract. So very similar to how cell phone companies set up their contracts. It's exactly how we do it with digital marketing. 
generally when you buy a phone, you're in a one year or two year contract, mm -hmm. depending on how much you finance your phone. If you finance your phone all up front, then you're not in a contract at all. But if you want to finance your phone for a year, it's a certain price. Finance it for two years, it's even lower. So it all depends on how long customers want to stay in contract. We have to do their website. That's the first step. Mm -hmm. Then comes the service side of it. So uh, sending LTE to a phone is very similar to how we send paid search to a website. We're making that website alive. And so from there, it's how alive do you want to make that website? Do you want to give it 20 gigs of data like on the phone plans? Or do you want to give it 10 gigs of data? And that's ultimately going to depend. That's ultimately going to vary the price. And what is that form of data that we deliver to that website? Well, it's PPC traffic, it's social media traffic, it's SEO traffic, it's content, it's link building, it's blogging. So different levels of traffic obviously affect pricing. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, our customers pay a one-time fee for a website up front because they don't want to be in contract. And that can range from 3,500 bucks to 6,500 bucks for a general small business website, like a de dentist or a doctor or a plumber. Mm -hmm. And then there's a monthly service fee of around $1,500 to $2 a month. And that'll include basically the entire package, the website, the SEO management, the directory listings management, the CRM management, the advertising spend, et cetera. Love it, love it, love that structure there. All right, all right. So I want to go into um, uh, like uh, how you actually built your company into where it's at now. Because I mean, I've seen also like headlines like uh, of some of your video titles on uh, how you went from 10,000 a month to 100,000 a month. I mean, that's... That's a huge jump uh, per, per month. I mean, you must be taking a bunch of clients. I mean, so what? What are some like your your top three like business growth tips, and how were you able to manage that? I mean, like, have you scaled in in um, employees, or have you gotten more like um, virtual assistants? How how how'd you grow, and how'd you like fulfill it? I think for me, it was um, creating a, a systemized offer and working on one offer rather than trying to do a bunch of different things. The moment we required the website as a stepping stone for us to work with the customer, things just got a lot more systemized and it was um, it was it allowed me to actually train people to do a, the same job over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. The issue with having just like an SEO service or an ad service is it's so custom all the time. You start with the audit, then you have to fix the audit. Then you have these issues of like that well the site isn't designed well, so now like I really can't do my job to the fullest. I think that if you're doing SEO and you're not working on the website or taking over the website, I, I don't think you're truly doing SEO. I think you're just doing like basic, basic SEO that the clients aren't going to retain that way. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. for me, it was really creating a structured offer, one that I can optimize and grow. And I've been working on that offer for about three years now, and it's been working really well. And that offer is redo the website, continue the content, run the ads. It's very straightforward. Um, the second one is look at yourself. Um, I think like a lot of things happen with personal growth in your mm -hmm. company. So mm -hmm. A lot of my mentors will tell me that my company is just a personal reflection of me, and it really is. So, like, if I'm being silly, my company will be silly. If I'm being rude, my company will be rude. If I'm being lazy, my company will be lazy. It's very weird. It's like a mirror. Mm -hmm. And so, when I think mm -hmm. about how to 10x my business, because my next goal, short term, extremely short term, I may change when I reach 30. Right? This might mm -hmm. all change. My next goal is to get to 12 million dollars a year. And so, if I'm already at a million dollars a year, well, how do I 12x that or 10x that? Well, I, what the question I usually ask is, how can I 10x my, my personal life and make it better and become a better person and become a better mm -hmm. leader? And that starts with yourself. So really start with yourself, check yourself first. Make sure you're doing an offer that you can scale and that you have you keep doubling down on to stop changing your mind so much. Um, often we change our minds just too much. It, it's not fun in the beginning, but over time as you start to gain some clout and you start to gain some momentum, you start to create a moat, it gets very fun to play the game. I always relate it to a video game um, mm -hmm. and it's very straightforward. If you're on level one, the game's not gonna be fun because you're gonna suck. But if you're on level 100 and your character is buff and your character is optimizing and he has good endurance and he has really good skills, the game's gonna be fun. So you really have to just stick it out in the first couple of levels until you get to that point where you start really like uh, evolving. And then from there, once you start evolving, you hit some additional roadblocks. And that's, I guess, what keeps me going at mm -hmm. that point. Excellent! Yeah, everyone, you went deep there. Love it, love it. Okay, so we have here Rob Ross says, totally, it's much easier to sell anything if it's productized. All right. So we also have, um, talking about like self, de uh, personal development, we have a question here from Hobby. Hobby asks like, how often do you update your skills and knowledge as an SEO writer or SEO? 
I think the number one way is just keeping a close eye on your websites that you're working with mm -hmm. and doing a lot of experimentation. And that costs money and there's not necessarily an ROI. It's more like a weird science experiment that can go really well or it could just fail and then you never try it again. Um, we did this with a lot of things. I've done this with a ton of things in SEO. That's the best way that I learn. Mm -hmm. Every single thing that I watched inside of this trailer um, I've heard before. And so it's, you know, once you do something for so long, it starts to become uh, regurgitated information over and over and over again. And so when you're at that point, that's when you should start experimenting yourself. Brian Dean does an amazing job with this. And so what he'll do is he'll do these legitimate experiments and case studies and share them on his channel. And so he's at the point to where I can't say, hey, Brian Dean, guess what? Building links is important. Well, no crap, right? Like we all knew that. So at, the, at some point when you do it for so long, especially for the people that have been doing it 10, 15 years, it, all of the information is the same. It's just regurgitated. So you have to experiment to find what, what works. And you had Chris Palmer on the channel before uh, doing his little skit there. He does a really good job with that. So Chris will actually take some of his budget of his own money and do mm -hmm. tests and then report those tests back to the people that uh, watch him. And that's why his channel is doing relatively well. I've seen this happen with a lot of SEOs where they actually stumble across something magnific magnificent. Maybe they don't share it because they don't want to share their secrets, but they get to it by trying new things with different customers. So if you've been writing in the title tag the same way, this is very basic, obviously, but if you're writing a title tag the same way for, let's say, two or three years, try a completely different approach and just consistently do some of these um, A-B tests with your SEO and see what works and what doesn't work. So I think that's probably the best way that I would stay connected. I also really like Reddit, um, the Reddit SEO channel, group, the community, whatever it's called. Um, there's always new challenges that are coming up in there. And then of course, my best way to, to learn is just watching YouTube. I think as a world that's really sh looking at content all day on our phones, mm -hmm. YouTube is a great way to stay in touch with things. That's why we're gonna level up the quality of our videos times 100, because I really think we have a lot to share now. Uh, and we have the production team behind it to actually give more uh, impactful education. Love it, love it. Hopefully that answers your question there, Javi. Great answer, love that. So I want to, we're coming into to my, my last question of, of the day. And if, so if anyone has any questions, if you want to sneak one in, go ahead and put it in the live chat. But this is a question I ask all my SEO professionals that come on here. Um, if someone wants to get into the SEO game, get in the SEO industry, become an SEO professional themselves, what would your advice be to them? I would say learn website development as soon as possible. Um, I think it's gonna become even more important in the near future. SEO is not just working on a website anymore, it's actually making that website. You need to understand site structure, you need to understand basic layout, you need to understand basic wireframing, user experience. With Core Web Vitals becoming a critical component, you can't afford to not know web development. And I don't necessarily mean you need to be the next Mark Zuckerberg, but you should definitely know how to make a website with your hands. Uh, it's a very basic skill set at this point because there's so many different content management systems out there, but I just see so many SEOs trying to freelance some of their web work. And it's like, did you know that it's really easy to do and you can just do it yourself with some basic <laughs> knowledge? Mm -hmm. Probably learn it from like one course on Udemy and then you would never have to ask a designer or a web developer for help ever again. And then you could sell that service and make more money. Um, so I think that's totally underrated in our industry right now. I think more SEO companies need to do websites I think more website people need to do SEO. It's just like, um, you know, it's hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Now design mm -hmm. is obviously something different. So you should always work with a designer if you want something to come out the way you want it to come out, but you should definitely know the back, the in and outs of an actual website. Love it, love it. Okay, so this is like, um, if, there, if there's any, anything else that you want to say, any last piece of advice, how people can get a hold of you to make this episode feel complete for you, please, the stage is yours. Um. I think one of the last things that I want to say is, um, yeah, follow me on YouTube. That's definitely where you'll get up to date information very soon from what we're doing inside of my agency on a daily basis. We're trying to capture almost like a reality TV show, but not really kind of doing some of these really cool competitions within our team that are all SEO goals and design goal based. So that's going to be really fun. Um, and then the last thing I think with SEO is um, just keep a close eye on AI metaverse applications and a lot of these different ways, like Brave, the Brave browser, mm -hmm. because they're in reinventing the way that users submit their information through cookies and all of these really interesting things. So keep an eye on emerging tech. 
in 2015, 2017, 2018, you know, social media advertising was becoming very important. And just like that, it's kind of starting to die down a little bit. And so emerging tech, I think this time around is going to be very, very important. And SEO, unfortunately, will not be the rest of how people, the rest of the way that how people are going to connect with businesses. I think there's going to be more stuff that your, your skills can also be applied there as well. So keep an eye on emerging tech. Definitely lurk, look a little bit more into GTP3. I think that's what I would do right after this call if you're not familiar with it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, take a look at just understanding how the blockchain works because it's going to affect SEO. Same thing with NFTs very soon. Dropping all these knowledge bombs. Love everyone. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. And this is actually the very, very last thing I always ask all my SEO professionals. If, if you got a special talent or if you can rap, if you can play an instrument on live, uh, can you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I definitely uh, don't have any special talents. <laughs> nah. All right, everyone. I just want to take, make it, take the ask. Everyone, give a round of applause to everyone. Thank you so much. Can you hold on for just one quick second while I sign off here? All yeah. right. All right. All right, guys. That concludes another episode of the SEO Video Show. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you next week. Peace out. Thank you for watching. Hope you come back next week. Make sure to subscribe. You don't want to miss a thing. Hope you learn something new because the vibe is incredible. From the special SEO professionals, SEO video show. Let's work. Want to see you be an SEO expert. Paul Andre DeVera helping you step it up. No delay right now. Time to level up. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Woo!